Turkish. <laughs> We're ready to roll when you guys are. Okay. I'm joining the meeting of Wednesday, June 14th, meeting of the Natural Resource Committee of to order. Um, we'll just go ahead and do the roll call just so we know who's here. All right. Matt Cool. Doug Neely. Dorothy Dalsred. Bill Clark. Trent Warnes. And we do have a quorum. So, although there, I don't think there are any uh, action items. Um, so we don't have anything on old business per se, um, and a new business I think is going to be items. Uh, there was a question as to whether uh, I got a call from uh, uh, from Laura, uh, the planning director, and uh, asking <coughs> if we wanted to have an agenda, and I said yes, I think we do it, and I made the suggestion that we have the review of the Willamette Falls Legacy Project event on the 20th, uh, on the 3rd, uh, June 3rd. Uh, I, I went to that event and uh, mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of stuff and they're really down to their final design piece. I mean, they've got most of that design underway and I thought it'd be really good to hear about it. Yeah. One, th one thing that was brought up there that uh, I want to, I'll bring up later, but. Yeah, I, um, I wasn't here and I spent the last couple of hours watching the video of the work session and then going through the blog post from the Legacy Project website on the design unveiling. Um, and so, you know, um, I'd, I'd appreciate your giving me some feedback on how it went too. Um, the other thing mm -hmm. on new business, I'm on the mm -hmm. uh, Parks and Recreation Committee and we had asked for a joint meeting and uh, before they have a joint meeting, they want to know what the joint meeting's about. Right. So we should, we should <laughs> spend the whole time. Come up with some ideas. There are reasons, but I don't think we actually <laughs> presented any reasons to them. So we probably ought to better do a little bit of focusing. So <laughs> <laughs> they well, you know, if you give dead air, I'll fill it. <laughs> Silly stuff, but I'll fill well, it. <laughs> So anyway, yeah, so and, uh, the one you on the uh, joint work session, we had a doodle poll to see what the date preference was, and it's evenly split split between this coming June twenty second, which is right around the corner, and I'm not sure that that's going to work because we'd have to publish the agenda tomorrow, or, or July uh, the twenty seventh, and then. Uh, I noticed that we didn't. We could still get some feedback from you all on on what those date preferences. The the third date preference we put out was August twenty fourth, but there wasn't as much support for that. And that's probably was less support because just too far out there. It's and too far. Those are kind of conflicts yeah. they might have. So if uh, well, July twenty seventh Thursday, and that happens to be the concerts at the park, and I got an mm. event going on. <laughs> Um, but I um, a concert on park here in Oregon City. Yeah, but so um, the twenty seventh of July is concerts in the park. You got to find out which yeah, one that that's is. That's a Thursday. Uh, might be your sponsor night. Yeah, yeah it might be. <laughs> <laughs> it's Ray, well, this, Ray, Gordon, it's Ray Gordon. Yeah. What time does that start? Uh, I think they start at I don't know. I'm gonna say six thirty. Six thirty. Yeah, I think yeah. that's right. Okay. Well, I put a call in to John. Uh, you're right, we had a lot of Johns. Phil Lewis um, this evening to see about uh, June 22nd. So maybe we can just. Okay, well, with that, we'll go directly to the new business and we go ahead that discussion about the joint meetings in terms of the kinds of things we want to talk about. Um, I guess I'll start there. Are, Several of our parks that are basically natural area parks like Rivercrest, uh, Water Board. Um, mm -hmm. As Dee uh, knows, the uh, that's one thing the Parks Foundation has taken on in particular, uh, yep. and getting getting uh, getting invasive move from Water Board. So they're they're you know parks are parks and rec are already involved uh, in that uh, particular effort. And there's a grant being that is being submitted. In to our metro enhancement, we'll find out on the 29th if you know we have to give a, a talk 
to see if there's a grant for Ivy Pool. Okay, very good. Um, and uh, there are several. There are several. There are several parks that are natural. Rivercrest comes to mind, but there are also parks in which. Because of the location, they have a lot of natural area around them. Uh, uh, Atkinson Park comes into mind. It's 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 mm -hmm. mostly an open space area. It has some recreational equipment on it, but around it, there's, there's slopes going up to the park that uh, are park property and that have invasive species on them. And uh, and so we might, uh, any other parks that we can think of offhand that are... Um, Singer Creek has a significant amount of... Yeah, no, Singer Creek, definitely. And then uh, also uh, Clackamas, Clackamas Park, Clackamas Park is uh, almost, is the boundaries of the end rod actually match the park boundary, and, which is and, a metro. And, and we also have the yeah. uh, Old Canema Park, Old which is Canima. all natural area. Um, Pretty and, much. Not the children's park, but the old yeah, the old park. Right. park, and Not that one need, that one needs some severe love too. Yes, it does. And then the other, and that's one, going to be a big walking trail eventually. There will be working yeah. on there. Yeah, the other one that has the the wetland going through it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Gaffney, uh, no, no, yeah. Um, Helmondale. Helmondale. Thank yeah. you. Helmondale. Yeah. Helmondale. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, it's got a stream going through it. Those, so those are all actually have portions of the natural resource overlay district. In them partially or wholly. Yeah. Yeah. And um, although there's a, there's no vegetative buffer area around it, to some degree, uh, Chapin Park uh, has come going off the north Oops. side. There has uh, Coffee Creek going uh, by it. Chapin, yeah. Uh, but it's mm -hmm. it, it's just it's basically kind of a ditch there. I mean, there's mm -hmm. nothing. But but maybe something should be done too. It's true. I mean, the portions that when you have seasonal inundation where things start to change over time. Yeah, like it, in, uh, it got uh, very waterlogged this year. Quite <laughs> uh, ground equipment wasn't available, and people were talking Wesley about Wesley Lynn, like that. Uh, Playa Drainage and so oh, forth. Oh, yeah, in the playground. It was well, a lake. It was a lake. Yeah. But I, I did I just, mention that if you, know, you start pulling water off under those particular conditions, it could have tremendous. Impact that's Coffee Creek, so it could have tremendous impacts. For example, the Kanima neighborhood itself could mm -hmm. get inundated if you, you know, so those well, kinds of things about that. drain, yeah, talking about how you drain something off have to be looked at very, very carefully because it's true the possible downstream uh, impacts, yeah, that's true. And if we identify mm -hmm. some of those areas, if mediation off site mediation comes into play we might be able to grab those areas and say you know we have these already designated for needing plantings of a certain type yeah mm -hmm. and since we were talking about yep. somebody who didn't know where we were going to put their hundred trees anyway <laughs> yeah i mean even if it's not a formally designated natural resource area the stormwater standards require you know some right. natural plantings and things like yes. that yes mm -hmm. So, yes, there are considerations for water quality that are bigger than just the natural resources areas. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, should that be basically our focus of our discussions and actually perhaps yeah. mention these particular areas ahead of time? Mm -hmm. Yeah, now we can partner together with them. To One other area that's a natural area that the city owns and parks maintains, but it's not. Uh, uh, designated the park is that uh, long strip along the Clackamas River between that pathway uh, on one side is South Fork uh, Water, uh, not South Fork Water, excuse me, Tri-City Sewer and on the other side is uh, the Clackamas and I know Parks gets down there and maintains those. Uh, mm -hmm. I'd like to argue that at one point it gets designated as a park. But yeah, that area where the it's sort of a big area in yeah. between the trail and the edge of the high Of course, well, the floodplain, too. Yeah, yes. floodplain. Flood right. I know what you're talking about. It yeah. took me a while to get to that, my head into that spot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and a, a lot of people go by it. I mean, a lot of people yeah. do that. Yeah, actually, a lot of people. Well, yeah. yeah, I biked through there yesterday, um, and I hadn't been on the trail diversion yet. It's going through the cove, so 
had to make a sharp right turn. <laughs> go straight. But another thought, if, if that yeah. is going to possibly, we can get that dedicated to a park, and if it's in the Enrod area, yeah. remember your signage, the water department, sewer department has incredible signage all over. And I just happened to mention them. I said, would you ever be interested in maybe doing some signage with our park area? And the woman says, we love signs. I said, ooh, maybe with your logo on it. Perked her ears right up. Yeah, I mean, that's a good point. And, um, and that West would be, is a good, be a good spot. Now. Yep, be an excellent yeah. spot. Water Environmental Services who put some of the kiosks up there along the trail there are good people to work with on that stuff too. So, but they're yeah. all about the PR too with the yeah. tours and stuff like that. Everyone yeah. has. Mm -hmm. Good point. Um, okay. And what else? Um, were there any other issues that you wanted to discuss with respect to trees with the Parks Department? Or, sorry, with PRAC? Yes. Mm. <laughs> A little TD in their heritage trees. Mm -hmm. um, I'd really like to talk to them about some of the parks that we have already mm -hmm. that we can start labeling and getting them designated and on our website so yes. we can build our website. I've talked to one person, Karen Morey, who's mm -hmm. friends of the Pioneer Cemetery. Mm -hmm. We have a, like 20 Civil War graves up there and, she, and many veterans that are without headstones and she's teaching people how to uh, uh, take care of headstones and, and repair. And then I was talking to her about the trees. Yeah. I was talking to her about the trees, and she was going, oh, there's some magnificent trees. I said, yes, we know. <laughs> yep. So I you know, kind of think that we might want to embrace Phil in fall after when winter's here, and all he has to worry about is flooding. Mm. They got some nice oaks on the um, McLaughlin promenade, too, which is... Uh, yes, we should. And, those, and that's one we could get maybe the McLaughlin neighborhood girls, uh, excuse me, women, uh, Francine and... Louise. But you know who I'm talking about, yeah. And maybe they would like to, because that's right yeah, where they're, they're are. Also, they're also the men in the McLaughlin neighborhood. I know, but those two women are led, heading that up, and I'm standing <laughs> behind them 100%. Just anyone who's willing to do and get out there sure. and put the foot down, that is marvelous. And then they, we can recruit more. Yeah. But that would be a, a good swath right. in there. But then I think we need to step it up and get plaques for the sides of trees. There's yeah. there's healthy ones that you can put up. Um, but anyway, Garen Morley was really interested in that. I um, talked to the gentleman, I should have had his card stapled there, who's doing the arbor culture at Clackamas Community College. There's no reason why we couldn't maybe get them to do all those oaks that are in their parking lots and work on that oak savanna. Right. Well, we. Uh, what do you mean? Not, they're not part of parks. And oh yeah. I'm sorry. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah I got, I got yeah. sidetracked. Uh, DD but, or yes, but veering. On a side um, note too, uh, both the high school and the uh, and and the Clackamas Community College have pieces of a an ash grove uh, that's there between their properties. Yeah. Much of it's in private ownership, but if we could. Uh, Get them, and I've talked to the I've, I've talked to the college a bit about it uh, to get those portions designated as groves too, but that's separate from our parks separate, and okay. rec. Separate, okay, um, but we can also here. outreach with our with our schools, which are not parks and rec, but yeah. they're public properties, right. mm -hmm. and they all kind of tie in and and uh, see if we can get some things at, you know identified as far as in the parks and in our schools, right. Because that means you can pull in organizations from the schools. That's volunteers. Those are new committee people. Also, those would be trees when they have their designation as heritage trees would be more in view of the public and perhaps could, you know, facilitate more private people. Coming. Absolutely. And then I think at that point, I still think we need to talk about bragging rights. Mm -hmm. People to put their name on the tree and sell for $200 or something like that. Put it towards our Arbor Fund. I want to put my mother's name on a tree, and I will pay two hundred dollars. Well, I will, tell, I will tell you. I, if, I will tell you. We need first of all, <laughs> we sign the heritage trees, and if somebody's going to say yes, I want this to be a heritage tree, you're going to make them pay to do it. I don't. I don't think I can support that whatsoever. No, the, you, no, it's it's free to get do all the paperwork. But if you want to name your tree and everything else, and on then your down, property, on well, on on it, in my property, or if someone like on the school ground says we're going to do, we'll do all the work for it, and you're going to 
tell what a beautiful Jerry Oak it is and everything else, but if you want to have a name put on that tree, like a park bench. Yes, like, if a person on their own property <laughs> designates a heritage tree, they shouldn't have to pay to put the name on. <laughs> but what well, if you I'll want like to put someone else's name on it? I like, like all this discussion. I'm just I trying to help. From times past, I think there's two parts to the heritage tree. Like, if you want to do it on your own private property, you can nominate it or whatever and yes. go through that process. Right. But if it's on city yes. own property, yes. anybody can nominate that's, it that's and a good push point. it through. Yeah. So I, I think. Because w how many yes. heritage trees are there in Oregon City as of right now? Not officially of designated. Officially designated. Four. Four. One fell down. So I mean, I think <laughs> if we're gonna do something, yeah, I think I we should put our that. efforts into let's focusing on what we can do on city property. Get them nominated. Get them through the process and show people that this is the process. This and, is how it's done. And if somebody wants to put their name on it, that 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 would be fine. Yeah, we but I, but I mean, that. I think like I said, the the school district's a little different story. I think we should focus our efforts on where we can know we could actually get heritage trees going on right now yeah. on city property that are within our that program. are within our scope and yeah. with our ability to get them through the we process. We still need an arborist. That's a big yeah. Step. I was just gonna say, you know, the, that's our biggest problem is an arborist. It, yeah, the first graduating want, class is not. We for want a valuable months. report, you know, for a, sure, a, a good information, good background, objective information about the condition of the tree. Well, I would put as that as an item too. I, 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 yeah, I think so because we're kind of going around and around talking about the arborist report because. thing, um, and it is a bit of a stumbling block. Because the cost, because it, it, and if we, we get find more committees place supporting to, that concept uh, yeah. to, to the city commission, we're, yeah. we're in a better position to get something yeah. like that in the budget. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. Yeah. Okay. Speaking of that, if we're going <laughs> to talk about <laughs> arbor reports and <laughs> yep. Um, but, but it's not if we're or we're, we're not off prac, prac. Wait till me we're done with prac and then I'll. Well, no. Is there anything else people want to see on the prac meeting and then we? Can um, yeah. Good question. Well, can I talk for Oregon City Parks Foundation in sure. regards to sure. that? Absolutely. Um, I I will going to get up and speak to see if there's anyone in prac that would um, help volunteer to get out some of the fundraising and awareness too about. Who might be out there writing grants and I'm sure there's many of them but of course I'm on one committee and so I, I will bark about that committee and that's the Oregon City Parks Foundation and there are three specific fundraisings where we're going to be outreaching into our city with some events down the road and um, so I'm gonna talk to them about those things one of the bag drop bottles we're collecting for the city the next one is um, the big drop-in where they're going to be passing out bags to citizens for them to drop off either at the concerts or at the exchange system and the next one will be and this one's just in his forming works kick in for parks and that will be specifically funding and it's not in stone and have to locate 60 pairs of boots when you, when you make a presentation talk to my mitchell because he's on with the prac and yep. so you want to make sure yeah that yeah and but anyway we just if we can work with our we need to talk to him about these things for helping helping the parks out with them and so and that would go towards vandalism there are a lot of vandalisms in our parks yeah and i think then after that there's passions on that park for xerces and that's exactly what nrc should be embracing are those natural areas that we can put pollinators in and mm -hmm. trees and yeah well oh that's another thing and I've mentioned this and in, 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 I've mentioned this to uh, the, the parks director too but uh, uh, actually doing that uh, you know uh, uh, milkweed for the monarchs and so forth yeah. and some of our parks uh, uh, would have those kinds of possibilities. And it's perfect little and signage for them. Pollinator all the state parks are doing it plants. for other information centers. <laughs> uh, okay. It's kind of a nice idea. And I think the Water Conservation Department, they just did a seminar and I asked them if there was anybody that was a pollinator specialist and they said yes. So just yeah. in case we want to see if they could work with us sure. on that stuff too, there are partners and mm. Was it in one, clean of, water. one of the members <laughs> on the on the prac or is uh, uh, greatly concerned about uh, the impact of pesticides on on, on pollinators? Yeah, so, and uh, the, the, it's Roger. Uh, he's got a hyphen in last name. Ty, Fowler. Uh, Ty yeah. Fowler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Theus. Yes. Yeah. 
So, I mean, you're, you'll have a lot of support from PRAC on all of these things. That's what I'm thinking is yeah. that, and, it, and it, so much of it ties in with us, if we can say, okay, where it comes up for us, we need to jump in. And if we can have a, I like guess someone doesn't know where to you know, locate their <clears throat> trees off, off, off land, reclamation, did I use that right word, um, that we can put them in our little storage area for when we want to. We could work with the oak. Savannah people yeah. that are actively get in here, they might not have the trees. Well, Metro yeah. has a huge native plant program. Yeah. And they own the property right there on Kanima Bluff. That goes down to 99E, but... Who's this now? Metro. Metro, oh, yeah. Metro, yes. Metro Park, yeah. yeah. I volunteer at the Native Plant Center, and <clears throat> there's all kinds of native plant resources available. Yeah, because we're going to need to plant that, that water board right afterwards, too. I'm, not, I'm, not sure, I'm sure they have that written into it, right? <laughs> I'm the nickel. Oh, I bet person. they do. I hope they do. <laughs> anyway, um, so I don't know if I said anything or not, if I just veered off and blah, blah, blah. Well, that's okay. I mean, um, it, it's, it's basically related to the kind yeah, of things we'll um, talk to Prac to. And, anyway. and permits. Uh, there's... A, I don't know if you guys got the email to look at the apartment, the hotel that's coming in, mm -hmm. uh, down on 17th Street. Oh, okay. There's just happened to be a chestnut tree there, and the only reason it perked up my eyes, because I was just reading it, came to us, was that it had an arborist report. <laughs> so if we have things that have come through where there's an arborist report already done, that's a big stumbling block that we can at least go to those people and say, in kind, would you consider doing this as a citizen? To that tree that you already have an arbor support, and there might even be a volunteer to do the uh, do the footwork for you if you find the form. And of course, now this is, I would volunteer. This Matt, what Dee Dee's talking about is a land use Washington, notice that we sent Washington out, Street. and yeah. you should yeah. be on our yeah. distribution yeah. list. And so I, I if you didn't get it, I'll re yeah, I'll forward it. Okay, I don't but think that there's one. any way that can in the planning the process one, so. do a okay. uh, heads up on arbor support. Yeah, we're not always on vacation. Private property. Might have gone to the old. Well, most of the worst. Well, I think it's one of Dan Bowers' projects. Yeah. He's, he, oh yeah, I've already dropped off the forms. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't do that. Yeah. But um, but I, I wondered if there in the planning process, if there's any yeah. way to kind of like that one is up. going to a public hearing with the planning commission in July, so there'll be uh, a longer that. comment period up until the end of the closure of the public hearing. So. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, with that, well, let's, let's go on to the, uh, uh, the, the Willamette uh, Falls Legacy. You've got some yeah, show um, and tells. Well, I, I don't have anything up on the screen, but um, I could start talking and then bring it up on the screen while I'm talking. How about that? Okay. Uh, <laughs> bear with Hold me. The test there. And uh, if you run out of something to say, we can get deep. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so <laughs> the presentation from the Metro staff that uh, Doug, you know, had a lot of the same slides that um, what they didn't show at the presentation yesterday was the slides which had the proposed habitat restoration areas. Is that correct, Doug? Uh, yeah. I, I didn't go to Oh, you didn't, didn't go to I didn't Okay. So if you go on the website, oh, let's see. What is that last night's meeting that we're talking yeah, about? Yeah, I went to it. Joint, you were there. Yeah. Okay. All right. I thought that was the third. There was another there one. There was last a third. Night? Then they did. Yeah. Well, there was the big unveiling at at so OMSI the third, on the third. The third was a metro thing. They, anybody could go and it was. Yeah. It was this, really well done. Yes, it was, it was extremely well yeah. done. Yeah. Except the presentation that I went to, forty minutes was taken <laughs> taken up by the. Uh, a representative of the uh, uh, Umatilla uh, tr uh, tribe. Yep, he was very firm. He was very firm. <laughs> the first, the thing is, he he took up all the time. <laughs> yeah, I know. he wanted to make his point. He did. Well, well, and he did. Forty minutes. <laughs> Wilbur for Ross. For an, an overall hour presentation. Wilbur Ross. Uh, I don't know. I don't recall his name. I remember that doesn't sound familiar. But no, it doesn't sound familiar either. Uh, he doesn't want really to sure. Like Let's see. <clears throat> yeah, he's no. Right. Mm -hmm. 
bear with me. I wasn't kind of pre I wasn't prepared. Minus two. All right. Come up. I don't think it's going to come up. Oh, okay. sorry. <laughs> what I'll do is explain what I'm handing out. So. Um, There are, you know, the site was divided into basically four sections, the north to the south. And for each of those sections, areas one through uh, area four, there's a restoration strategy. And this is keyed into habitat types. Um, one is oakland, woodland, and savanna, oak, woodland, and savanna, riparian forest, riparian basalt, off-channel alcove and in-channel river. And for each of those um, habitat types, there's a, a more detailed review, uh, cutaway of what that concept would look like. A big aspect they can do this is peeling away some of the old buildings and getting back to the original edges that are available, particularly on uh, area two, which is the South River front, and um, the area uh, by the paper machine and the, pa uh, the flour mill is where the tail race is underneath. They're going to re expose that and add. So I'll hand these concepts down, and while you're looking at that, maybe uh, you guys can chime in, and I'll try to get this computer up and running but hey. I'm gonna get this thing turned on. Yeah right here, right? 120 feet deep. Yeah. Um, uh, let me see. And I think we control it. This is the presentation lab. Well, they're going to have to look hard for uh, Oak Savannah habitat. <laughs> I know it. But the, what they thought about putting it is in the recover the recovery ring. That it's it's their uh, yeah it's their uh, is where they were thinking about planting mm -hmm. um, some oaks in there. So it would be a small savanna. <laughs> Clarif the clarifier. Clarifier. Yeah. 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 Ye
It's okay. I think they got afraid of the kayak mm -hmm. people. So no, kayak no, people were the, stealing their thunder. Well, in fairness to the mayor, he suggested working. something in that, that nobody put it forward a motion to deal with. By selecting he a said laptop that pulled up. Did not means. include the discussion in terms of the of the of the walk uh, of the uh, the access that they're talking about here. And, right. But the the way the wording so was, was monitor is, control. It was an, almost a no-way position. Yeah. I didn't take uh, I didn't take it that way. I think they were talking about they're not going to include the kayaks in terms of their river walk development. They're, they're not going to make it an official part, but the, all of the tail races are. No, no, okay. but, but that's the point. Oh, that's okay. The mayor made a suggestion that we're not be considering it as part of the uh, of, of the. Uh, uh, walkway uh, the access uh, plans that they're doing uh, but the, the wording of it may sound like you know, it's 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 out of the picture completely and I don't think that was really the intent of it. but anyway and that was discussion the other night too and they were munching about the, the company that wanted to privatize that and, and they said it was a liability thing too I mean that was mentioned last night so there was some had been there's there's some discussion actually bringing water through these alcoves yeah and now I'll come to my uh, point of concern the suggestion was and people can and they were talking about it being refuge for juvenile salmon and so forth going out and then they said uh, people could go there and you know, dip their feet in the water. Well, you know, it, it, it's, I, don't, I don't think the juveniles are going to take a refuge or a lot of people yeah. having their feet in the water. Wow. So the thing is, there are three alcoves there, and I think uh, uh, I, I think we need to put a comment to that effect uh, that uh, we, do, we do have a concern if these alcoves are intended to be refuges that we really don't want the public uh, wading in the water down in those areas. I totally agree with that and I one of my concerns and I know that it's a major concern of the indigenous people which is not part of our mission but uh, is it becoming like high rocks or that big spring up in right. the forest service that they had to severely restrict now because of overuse of people crawling all over the rocks and everything. Mm -hmm. The waterfalls are very sacred and mm -hmm. yep. um, I know for a fact they're concerned about low water and a lot of inebriated people diving off the rocks yep. and tubing over the falls. And they, uh, that's not really our deal but your point about the salmon is very apropos. Mm -hmm. okay. And it certainly is in our bailiwick. Um, yeah. Right. And it would be interesting to see, it says potential public motorized and light water, um, white watercraft dock. Are they going to put the big jet boats up in there? Is that like okay? But I don't know. I'm well, there's kind of big, a, there's kind of docks and stuff in there now. If you mm -hmm. look and see, the old, you can yeah. see where they used to tie up and stuff. Yeah. And yeah. the water, when you get away the from the alcoves and stuff, well, it's 120 feet deep there. Okay. And for example, the sturgeon fishermen, yeah, they're fishing at about 110. Yeah, you can fish all of it. Right? Hmm? You can fish yeah. all of it. Yeah. Um, well, um, since I wasn't there, but I, I I'm going to ask if they can come back and give a presentation uh, on this at the next meeting, or would okay, that, that'd be great. Yeah, because I feel like I'm not ahead of the curve here at all. Yeah, you, um, it's not like yeah. you've been on vacation or something. Yeah. Like yeah. That. Well, they talked Twice? about at the, yeah. the the he goes on vacation. I go to surgery. The <laughs> first phase, and and where that'll and then how they'll come in with the second phase. They're going to come in off the highway, um, uh -huh. and then they also talked about changing their contracts for later due dates on some of the funding so they can get one of the nonprofits, Friends of the Falls, to be able to get their monies together too. Because they don't want to run completely out. They would like to roll it over into another one, but it all depends on funding. So that's kind of what I got out of it too, mm -hmm. that they're going to kind of start with this community middle and then come in from 99. Mm -hmm. Are the friends, have the friends had any luck drumming up funding? Don't know. I guess they would have 
It, they would have announced it if they had luck so far. They have to come up with a big chunk of change. <laughs> Can't do that clicking the bottles. <laughs> The other thing I did notice was, you That's know, exciting. the proposal to fill the clarifier and then make that a more of a savanna type environment, um, but that was conceptual, you know, because once they fill it, they can do a number of different things, but when it's filled with earth and it's not going to have great drainage, I guess. Uh, oh, so, I thought that yeah. clarifier was coming out. No. Big... Uh, Big cement round thing. Yeah, yeah, that's well. Now. There's a there's a couple reasons to that they're not going to take it out. One of them is I don't care what they are. Well, no, well, they're not. No, no, that's that's a legitimate reason. Uh, the dam is owned by PGE. They come in and do maintenance on the dam, then they're not going to have access to here. And they're talking about having connections to, from here to the clarifier and over to the dam. So you need a second of access. PGE yeah. maintenance. People will still be able to get out to the falls, so they're not going to bring the, they're not going to tear the core fire out. Right. And, and, if you go across the river and look at the clarifier oh, oh. and the and the natural stop, remember their history is one of the one of, is also it's one. not fifty years old. I've already been through that argument. Nineteen seventy seven, but it's. We're nitpicking, so yeah, yeah. It, it's not totally a historical it. structure. Well, it will be. Yeah, by the time they <laughs> drag their feet and get it worked on, yeah. yeah. It is. It is part of the industry that was there, uh, and um, it was required uh, by the 1972 Clean Water Act, and by the time the regulations and promulgated and so forth, it was likely not till '78 or so. And, which, uh, is, which is part of the history. It had basically nothing to do with the paper industry, it's but it's one of the, it's part of the history. <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, the, the point is they're not they're not turning out the right. Um, okay. So I, I think it'd be great if we could have them come come and speak to us, and uh, if we could have perhaps was Brian Vaughn that spoke to us before. Uh, well, this yeah. Well, yeah, Brian was here on the res on the restoration. The, the reason the reason I'm yeah. mentioning mm -hmm. him specifically yeah. is we're talking about the natural habitat, and that's what he's specifically been yeah. involved in. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's the leader of that work group. Yeah. So okay, yeah, yeah. he'd be probably the, the logical person to talk to. Yeah. And we could we could talk then to him specifically about our, some of our concerns about the alcohol. Uh, whether it should be oak savanna habitat and then a clarifier. Uh, well, if they're going to fill it with dirt, they can make it a great basin salt bush desert if they want, huh? Well, they'd, they'd rather have something in summer around here, but anyway. <laughs> would, would you like that? <laughs> I will tell you, Brian, I don't think Brian was happy with some of those natural designs that they're trying to put in the clarifier himself. But anyway. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that would be great. And if yeah. We could have Brian come out. He'd be, okay. I think he'd probably be a key person. I, I think we that's going to be an better. to somebody yeah. else, too. Ask him if he wants to bring somebody. But. Have, have a bit of dialogue as the concept moves into right. uh, fruition. Okay, I'll try to make that happen. Um, the other, well... I was going to briefly talk about um, John Runyon's presentation was canceled because he had a family, a, a personal thing happen yesterday. Okay. So, the Harbor guy. But Jerry was yeah. uh, wanting to talk about the uh, the report that John produced that was he was going to present on. So it's going to be at the next. It's been postponed. Okay. Yeah. And, and John Runyon's mm -hmm. coordinating the uh, what's called the Clackamas partnerships where. The four watershed councils are involved in the par partnership. The, of course, the uh, Clackamas River Basin Watershed Council, mm -hmm. no North Clackamas uh, uh, ri uh, River Council, which uh, basically is Kellogg Creek and some of those, and then Johnson Creek, and then also the Greater Oregon City Watershed Council is part of that partnership. And uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that he's going to present something on that, or do you know? Um, Probably, 
Okay. Um, um, I think his report on the Cove was, you know, very specific, but oh, okay. Well, if he comes and talks to the NRC, then he could potentially talk about the base okay. water. Okay. So we might talk about both. Yeah. We can if we could devote the time mm -hmm. to it, both the Cove and the partnership thing he's mm -hmm. working on. But so he's talking about the mitigation areas in the Cove and so right, the mitigation. That's approach. good. Yeah, um, which he's finished the draft report, and that's what he was going to present. Um, so, um, okay. Uh, I have not reviewed it, but it is, uh, it, it's on the agenda for the, for yesterday's city work session. You can download and read the report uh, at your leisure. And then we can get a follow-up presentation on that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Um, so... That's all I have, I'm afraid. Um, okay, well, we didn't have any action items anyway, so. No. Um, well, any technology issues this evening. So <laughs> I can talk for Jerry. Well, so, uh, <laughs> well I was to suggest is we kind of do our round robin. <laughs> okay. And uh, if you uh, want to talk for Jerry. Uh, you want to start? start? No, we'll start. Uh, yeah, no, I got nothing to, nothing to start with. Uh, today, um, the Greater Oregon City Watershed Council, along with um, I think it's Pacific Habitats, uh, is the organization that has a contract on working on the uh, ELC restoration. And uh, students from the college and students actually from Guelph and uh, Elementary School were out there salvaging amphibians and uh, hey. it was it was fun <laughs> we decided to screen off part of the Newell Newell Creek when we do the salvage under the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife you can take the creatures out and put them somewhere but you can't, can't bring, bring them back, back. in um, which I thought we were going to be able to do so what we've been doing is, is releasing it uh, downstream from the ELC site. site so, oh, so they can't climb back up. So they can work their way back up perhaps as time goes the time, but, but they have a screen in the meantime until they can get it going and then they can... Right, we've got a, 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 streams, a screen in the stream and release them down into the headwaters of Newell Creek. And there are wetlands below and so forth, so they'll... How many did you find? Oh, I would say among us all, hundreds of uh, juvenile uh, salamanders and, uh, and frogs. Of course, out kid tadpoles. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, I would no turtles. Kids love that. Yeah. I don't, we didn't see any turtles, and <laughs> no, nobody's seen any turtles there for a while. They early on at the ELC, they did have western pond turtles. Yep, they had several of them. Later on, it was almost red all sliders. Yep, red eared snappers too. I think is that a slider, a red eared snapper? A snapping turtle? It's got a red stripe on it? Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. I think that's a, sl that's a slider. Slider? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the ones with the red. Uh, it's, uh, there are snapping turtles. We don't have yeah, any. No, the <laughs> snapping turtles are not the ones with the red. Oh, no, that's no, what I was told it was no, called. No, 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 it's, it's, it's <laughs> I've been telling it's, people that wrong turtle for I can't think of the name with the, of the one with the red. I do know they're poikilothermic vertebrates. I think they are called sliders. Yeah. Okay. And, um, that was one of my kids' first words to make them So Look anyway, the uh, estivate. Uh, so that's a thing I was involved in this morning. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's any day doing that's better than the best day yeah, in the absolutely. office. Absolutely. <laughs> And so now, are you speak for yourself first or for Jerry I'll first? speak for Jerry. I've already, you've heard all my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Give me dead air. Uh, Bob comes out. Jerry, and of course, I have been to each one of his two, uh, two rivers, Oregon City Youth Guide Tours. Mm -hmm. And they have been extremely successful. That's, the that's first one was on the promenade. We had 38 people there. And oh, I, of course, then it's amazing. a perfect opportunity for other nonprofits to give a pitch. And try to get other people interested in so. And Jerry's been very open to that, saying if there's some extra open time, you're another nonprofit, and it kind of relates. Get in there. So anyway, he did another um, port of calls downtown in the port of calls. There's about 40 people, and maybe even more than that. And it was nice and long. It poured down rain, and no one left. Mm -hmm. It was great. And then the 
two rivers in a rowboat. Um, that one was when fishing opened up. There was no parking uh, down at Clackamas <laughs> Park. So we all put our little yellow shirts on and guided people and said, good luck. And they were still Still 33 people showed up, <laughs> and I know we lost some. He's got two more coming up. One is going to be a really cool one, ties into our waterboard park and our, and our thing. It's called the Ice Age Floods at mm. Waterboard Park, and, and looking at the basalt floods from the top and going all the way down, and maybe looking at the basalt rocks inside, and kind of uh, highlighting Waterboard Park. And then the other one will be at ELC up at the headwaters and it'll be the headwaters of Newell Creek and they'll show where they start kind of look around and do a tour through the ELC if they can go in because that one's going to be in September Maybe finish. yeah and then so take them up through there and then hopefully take it all the way to the beginning of the Metro Park and Newell Creek so um, but they they're averaging around 35 people per and now he, Jerry's been contacted by Salem saying, how can you tie us in? We're mm -hmm. just down the river. Can you tie in Salem into your pitches and talks? Up the river. Up the Thank river, you. yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I go up to California all the time, too. <laughs> but anyway, those have been very successful, and I think we should toot the horns. And if we can continue to support them on that, yay team. Do you know what you the know? dates of those are? Huh? Do you know what the dates of those are? Um, one will be on... July and September, he will he'll, okay. he'll give he'll give blast out emails, and then we can share them. And it's gone chit chat neighborhood thing. He'll email us all just because we're members, and then it will go to other nonprofit Facebook pages like Oregon City Parks Foundation and whoever would whoever Jerry pesters cool. I like that. but those have been really successful and really fun to go on you get to really it really builds a lot of fun community I have made neighborhood friends there that I only see at these little um, things and then at Ivy pools you know it's really fun saying hey you know my famous wolf family <laughs> <laughs> but anyway that kind of stuff does so much community building and it certainly ties into all of our tourism that we're going to be bringing in. Mm -hmm. So that's what I have to say for Jerry. Okay. Oh, and then I also did go to the meetings last night. They fa I found them fascinating. Um, one of the things I found, and I would like to kind of watch a heck of a lot more, and we'll all see it, is the traffic report. The traffic report, was I didn't even think that that was a whole report being done that in regards to the legacy system and I just kind of something I had not really thought about other than we have terrible parking what were we going to do mm -hmm. um, oh you mean well that's one of my concerns that I yeah and they had they had the planners down there talking about the, the various parking. different ways that um, how we might be addressing it um, both with bicycles and so they're they were doing an update on that and they were going to give some more solid things as we go forward but kind of telling them how we might start embracing car shares in our city, like car to goes, um, bicycles that you can rent and station, and uh, designated uh, parking and driving. It, it, there will be a real problem crossing from Main Street to the Legacy System and tying up 99, which is a freight road, and mm -hmm. just people pushing the button to walk across. Mm -hmm. They were making jokes about zip lines and stuff, and I thought, City of, <laughs> City of Elevators, aren't we? We're going to have two to our name here soon. <laughs> Build one on each side and send them over. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that, uh, that'll be interesting to follow. And the, and the legacy, which was very fascinating. Shut up. So um, as far as what I've done that way is, is go to meetings and pull weeds. <laughs> and <laughs> Ivy. Um, I'm... Apologize again for missing that joint meeting. I had every intention of going. I don't have anything new to report due to the fact I've been you hit. recovering from various things. But uh, a lot of interesting things going on, and I think uh, it's good to stay involved in the parks thing for sure. Uh, We, that is definitely uh, related to our mission and, you know, the 
species compositions of park plantings and so forth in the natural areas, uh, I think we should be concerned about. So mm -hmm. that's all I have for tonight. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Good. Yeah, I don't have anything going on. Okay. And one thing that Jerry did want me to mention was the um, ongoing discussion about uh, lighting standards, and we were scheduled to have a presentation with from the PGE staff okay. about their street lighting, but that's postponed till uh, next meeting. Okay. So we won't get that. Um, they're going to have um, input from the PG staff who know the most about the lighting quality and uh, pub and John Lewis was likely going to be in attendance as well our public works director so waiting on that and uh, get that next next month I'm just putting an email together to Phil Lewis about these items that we've discussed so that we can put an agenda together quickly tomorrow okay very good. Yeah. All right. Um, and yeah, so a couple of items that are still incomplete by the planning department. We had received a submittal from Metro for the Newell Creek Canyon Trailhead and parking area and trail system. Um, we deemed that incomplete some months ago. Um, and haven't received a full submittal back yet, so that's still waiting for official notice. And um, I think the holdup was may have been with respect to the um, trying to figure out exactly where the vegetative corridor widths are for some of the smaller tributaries that drain into the area. Uh, whether they're 15 feet or 50 feet or more based on all the ravines that are next to them and that kind of thing. So that's taking their biologists some time to figure out and map those because they want to do a good job. Mm -hmm. And uh, once they've figured those out, they'll be able to tell with some certainty whether or not the trails and the landings of the of the pedestrian bridges that would go over some of the observation areas have any impact in those corridors and then what the mitigation is but they got to do the this the work first and figure that out so that's that and um, um, as Didi mentioned we have a submittal for a phased master plan down at 17th and Washington where the um, um, across from the end of the Oregon Trail Interpretive Center. Uh, the first phase will consist of a 99-room, five-story hotel, which is pretty significant for Oregon City, be a second hotel in town. Um, it will require historic review board approval. It's going to be in the floodplain, so the first floor of that will be parking and not habited area. So. Um, they will be requesting various adjustments to the city code for that site. Um, and then the second phase of that would be uh, mixed-use development with ground floor commercial and uh, apartments above between the Amtrak station and where the uh, hotel is going. So it's still in the floodplain. Yeah, um, <laughs> it still is. So not quite as so high a build, high a building. The ground floor commercial. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, they'll have to build those ones above the above the uh, fifty two point seven feet is what the design flood elevation is. I might, I might add anybody that uh, wants to go down in the afternoon or evening to the bistro that serves the train stations. Nice. Yeah. It's really nice. It's coming along, and I think it's starting to make some money, <laughs> which was a big deal for them. Um, okay, that's all I have. Um, thanks. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Well, thank you all. Mm. Thank you. Um, this, the meeting, the joint meeting, would it be at 7 o'clock, or would it be an hour ahead? We're saying 6 to 7, because it was going to be before Prax's regular oh, meeting. Okay. Yeah. Um, so if there's anybody who has problems with that time, let me know as soon as you can. And I'll 
confirm with Phil tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. You're saying yeah. that's for next week, the 22nd? Well, that's the agenda will go out tomorrow, but it, Yeah, I don't I'm yeah. not going to be able to um, make that, so. Yeah. I'm going to be out of town. Okay. All right, if you're going to be out of town, well, okay. Do you have a preference, Bill? No. Okay. I can be there. Okay. They're always uh they're always on the, per, on the fourth Thursday. <laughs> for a couple of months. Far, yeah, far, far as you know. Uh, okay. Oh, July July the whole point is to get this meeting place. Um, actually, I just found so out I might first? be out of town for that you one, too. Oh, I've got a bunch of stuff going on. So but the toes in it. February. Yeah. In the hip in May 3rd. This was an option, too, but I don't yeah, think that's oh. too far away. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Well, yeah. I, I, I fell into the, into well, the water, and I had. I think Kelsey, you're going to be pretty good. Well, so, 